بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم أمين وبعض We continue with Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala In this next chapter, Imam Nawi rahmatullah alayhi titled Babu Tawqeer al-Ulama wal-Kibar wa Ahl al-Fadl wa taqdeemihim ala ghayrihim wa raf'i majalisihim wa idhari martabatihim In this chapter, Imam Nawi he titles chapter on revering the scholars and elders and so Imam al is talking about reverence, having reverence for the scholars and elders. وَأَهْلِ الْفَضْلِ And the people of virtue, respected people in the community. And وَتَقْدِيمِهِمْ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِمْ And preferring them to others. And وَرَفْعِ مَجَالِسِهِمْ And um, honoring their gatherings. Wa idhari martabatihim and proclaiming and, and, and making prominent their status. Um, what does this mean? This chapter, Imam Anawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he is showing us that part of the sunnah and the teachings of this Islam is that we honor our scholars and we honor our elders and we sit with them and we try to attend their gatherings and be in their presence. And if we think about this from a social aspect, if you look at a society, you know the values of a society based on the people they idolize. If you look at any society, the people they idolize the most are the people that hold the most important values to them. So in the United States and Western societies, as we see as time progresses, society generally idolizes who? Athletes, music stars, right? music artists, actors. Everybody talks about them. And young people fall in love with them, and they pay hundreds of dollars, even thousands, to attend their performances, to wear the same clothes they wear, and to watch their shows, to attend their concerts. Why? Because these are the people they idolize, so, and, and these are the things they hold valuable. Sports, music, movies, and shows. For a Muslim community, we don't idolize music stars and actors and athletes. We idolize our scholars and the righteous and our elders. And whenever there's a gathering of scholars, we try to attend. And we, we, we go to the service of our elders. If there's a gathering of elders, gathering of scholars, we try to be in their company, learn from their wisdom, learn from their character, seek their dua, and seek their blessing. And so as Muslims, it is very important that we're mindful of this. Our parents and previous generations, they saw attending the gatherings of scholars as a form of ibadah. And they would do whatever they can. In the early generations, Imam Bukhari or in the, in the early, early generations of scholars, the gathering of a scholar would be attended by thousands of people. When Imam Bukhari visited Baghdad, for example, in one of the famous stories, they said his gathering was attended by over 100,000 people. You don't see this today. I mean, a scholar, if you had a prominent scholar come to the city, if you've got a few hundred people, it's, it's, it's great. But if you have a big actor, or a singer come, or a basketball star come, the other, I think, uh, what was it, two weeks ago, there was a basketball, a pro-am basketball competition that the whole city was talking about. It was, in, it was in the news, right? LeBron James and these famous athletes, basketball players were there. People slept outside the doors 
the night before, and thousands of people were in line just to see a basketball player. Our dean teaches us to idolize our scholars and to attend their gatherings. And so us as parents and as elders, we want to teach this to our children. Not because maybe the sheikh doesn't necessarily have to teach you even something new. The fact is that you're in the presence of dhikr, and you're in the presence of noble people, and you're in the presence of knowledge and reminders. And you bring your children and your family members to these, to these gatherings. When you do this with your children growing up, they will idolize the scholars. They will learn from their knowledge and learn from their wisdom and learn from their character. But when we don't connect them to the ulama and we don't connect them to our elders, then they have no scholars and no elders and no noble people to idolize. So they end up following these superstars, athletes and music stars and you know, actors and so on and so forth. And so it's important that we really be mindful of this. And, and this again is one of the challenges of the Muslim community is that us as Muslim, we don't honor our ulama. We don't honor our elders. How do we expect our children to honor them? We don't attend the gatherings of dhikr and the gatherings of knowledge. How do we expect our children to attend them? It will not happen. And so it's very important that we understand, you know, the wisdom, some of the wisdoms behind the importance of, of the scholars. And, and showing to our children and to us that the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars. They are the inheritors of the Anbiya. Who are the inheritors of the Anbiya? Who takes the position of the Anbiya? They're the ulama. The Prophet he said that. Whoever wants to, uh, whoever wants to inherit from the inheritors of the Anbiya, let them be a scholar. One time Abu Huraira, anhu, he went to the market. He told them, if you want to get the inheritance of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, come to the masjid. Everybody came from the market to the masjid. He told them, this is where you inherit the, the treasures of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is in the gatherings of knowledge. Right. So this is the reality. But what's, what, when we see the money, we run after the dunya. When we see the knowledge, we see the dhikr, we don't really want to attend. We're too busy. We don't have time, I have work, I have this, I have that. So we really have to prioritize this and also teach our children to value our scholars and the gatherings of elders and knowledgeable people so that they can love the deen and see the status of our ulama. And so that's just an introduction to this topic and especially for us as a Muslim community in a Western society, it's very important that we attend these gatherings and we honor our scholars and we teach our children to honor our scholars. And a lot of these things are adab as well greeting the scholars, being in service of them, greeting elders, serving the elders. This is one of the adab, our scholars, they taught us. In one of the hadith it says, seek the barakah with your elders. If you want barakah, go to your elders. Seek their wisdom, be in their presence, seek their dua, right? And so this is something we need to teach our children, especially in, in, in our Western societies, this individualized culture it, it takes away respect for elders. Children will talk to elders as if they're their equal. Right? They don't even know how to address them and how, how, by what title they should call them and how to serve them. And so these are adab. We must really teach our children so that they have the proper khuluq and adab. And we bring them to the gatherings of knowledge and, and ilm. Um, as for the chapter, uh, Imam Anawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrates, he starts first with a verse of the Quran, قال الله تعالى قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب Say, are those who have knowledge and those who, don't, who do not have knowledge, are they equal? Right? هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون No, they're not equal. Those who have knowledge are always more virtuous than those who don't have knowledge. Not by money, not by power. The most important quality that gives a person worth and value is the knowledge they carry. As for the ahadith, the first hadith is narrated by 
عن عن ابي مسعود عقبه بن عامر البدري الانصاري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ام القوم اقراهم لكتاب الله فان كانوا في القراءه سوا فاعلمهم بالسنه فان كانوا في السنه سوا فاقدمهم هجره فان كانوا في الهجره سوا فاقدم فاقدمهم سنا ولا ولا يؤم ولا يؤمن الرجل الرجل في سلطانه ولا يقعد في بيته على تكرمته الا باذنه so this hadith the prophet sallam he tells us that the community should be the jama'a should be led by the one who has most knowledge of the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so if you think right why is the one who has the most knowledge leading the salah the imam he is the leader of the community before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the prophet sallallahu says the person who should lead the community before allah and stand before them and be the middle person between them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be the one who has the most knowledge of the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not the one who has the most money not the one who's most famous not the one who's most handsome now it doesn't matter about their culture, their ethnicity, their background, none of them. The knowledge of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the quality that the Prophet says raises your status before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they are equal regarding their knowledge of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then those who are the most knowledgeable of the Sunnah. And if they are equal in regards to the Sunnah, then those who have Hijrah, according to their presidents and who made Hijrah first. This is during the time of the Prophet. And then after that, according to their age. If they're equal, then the eldest will lead. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, no man should lead a ma another man in his dominion. That meaning, if no man should lead another man in his home. So if, if you enter your brother's house, then the person who leads the salah at the house should be the man of the house. And the only time somebody else leads salah in another man's house is if the person says, please lead the salah in my home. But the, 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 the Sunnah of the Prophet says, no man should ever lead another man in his presence uh, or in his, in his dominion except by his permission. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and another man should never sit on, on, the, on the sofa or the, the sitting space of his home except by his permission. And so if you ever enter somebody's home, part of the adab is you do not sit until the host tells you, please sit down. There's another adab a lot of people don't pay attention to. And our children are not even aware of. So we teach them. When you enter somebody's home, you do not sit. Until Sahib al-Bayt, he says, please sit down. A lot of, in a lot of our cultures, Muslim cultures, what happens is, you don't even eat. If you, they invite you to food, you always wait. You don't drink or eat until the elders eat first. Right? Children were taught, if, you, if there's a family dinner, you don't eat before your parents. You wait. You wait for your mom and dad to sit down. Once they drink or buy the food or grab a cup of drink, and then you start eating out of respect and adab. These adab are very lost in this culture. In this culture today, with, this, with the youth, it's very lost. Even with many of our uh, older, older youth, it's very lost. So it's important that us as Muslim community, we teach our children. When you enter somebody's home, you don't sit until the person tells you to fadla and sit down. <coughs> and if they bring food, you don't eat or start drinking until they sit with you and they start drinking with you. It is a way of honoring the host. And so this is also from the Sunnah that the Prophet showed that we have this respect. Also in the next hadith, narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liyaliyani minkum ulul ahlami wa nuha thumma alladhina yalunahum wa thalathan wa iyaakum wa hishat al aswaq And so in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said those who pray behind me should be the people of knowledge and wisdom. The people of knowledge, the people of wisdom and intellect. And he said that he said that three times. So the Prophet is saying that the people who should pray immediately behind me should be the most knowledgeable and the most wise people. Again, because why the front of the line is the highest place in the in the salah after the Imam. Right? And the Prophet he said in the hadith, if you know what is in the the Adan. And in the front, the first row, you would have competed for it. If you know how much barakah and virtue is in, is in that position. And so it is also the Prophet's command that those who always come to the first row and pray behind the Imam should be those of uh, wisdom and, uh, and knowledge. And so part of the sunnah is that we should always 
for the fourth are scholars to pray behind the in the first row behind the imam. The, the next hadith is narrated by Abu Musa radiallahu anhu. He says, "Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, inna min ijlal Allah taala this shaybat al Muslim, this shaybat al Muslim, wa hamil al Quran, ghayr al ghalifi, wa al jafi anhu, wa ikrami this Sultan al Muqsid." And so this hadith is amazing. The Prophet sallam he says, "Indeed." Um, it is out of reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you respect an elderly Muslim. So part of having ta'zeem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you respect the elder. Right? And so this is another adab we have to teach them. Right? To have this respect for elders and to have this adab. Also, uh, and for us ourselves of course. And second he said, and the one who commits the Quran to memory. And so part of the sunnah is also to always honor the people of the Qur'an and the people who carry the knowledge of this book, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last, and to respect the just ruler. And the final hadith in this chapter, Imam Nabi rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَعَنْ عَمْرِ بْنِ شُعَيْبِ عَنْ أَبِيهِ عَنْ جَدِّهِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيَعْرِفْ شَرَفَ كَبِيرِنَا and so the Prophet he said, He's not from us, whoever does not have mercy on our young, and he does not know the noble status of our elder. And so the elders, they are they have a high status. Why? Because they've spent their life worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person must know their status, always be respectful, and always honor them. And there's another adab that is very important to be mindful of, that we practice the first of all, and then we also teach our children and our youth that we always honor our elders, we maintain adab, we mind our behavior, we mind how we talk to them, we try to serve them and help them in any way we can. We seek their words of advice, we seek their dua, we seek their guidance, we honor, we honor them at all times. And this is part of the ta'zim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a form of and, and subhanAllah, you know, not just in this society, but around the world, we see that the respect for, uh, for ulama and the respect for elders and the attention to adab and akhlaq has deteriorated around the Muslim world. Around, everywhere around the world, you see that the, 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 there's just a culture around the world that there, there's a lack of respect for people. And so it's very important that we revive this sunnah and we maintain our adab with our scholars and our elders and all of those that we are obligated to respect. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us noble character. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beautiful adab and to raise our children as righteous people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless for us our elders and our scholars. And we ask Allah to surround us with their gatherings to make us the people of remembrance and gratitude. We ask Allah to grant us sincerity to forgive our sins. We ask Allah to bless our homes, our health and our wealth, our family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make la ilaha illallah firm in our hearts and in the hearts of our descendants. We ask Allah to forgive the Muslimin, those who are alive and those who have passed. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alhamdulillahi wa